Nostalgia versus technology. It's the battle of the Disney attractions, old versus new. Hey, ma'am, fam, I'm here in Walt Disney World with an all new challenge. Today, I'm headed to all four parks to ride the oldest and newest attraction in each of them, eight rides total. After each ride, I'll be scoring them on a technology scale as well as a must ride scale to determine a winner. And I think the results may surprise you. Our classic nostalgic favorites strong enough to beat the latest and greatest in technology? There's only one way to find out, and we're starting at the Magic Kingdom. Kicking things off at the Magic Kingdom. I'm gonna do my best to do this entire video from oldest park to newest park. Good morning! Which is gonna be tricky because Animal Kingdom's the newest park and it also closes the earliest, so I may abandon that idea later. I'm already having to abandon my idea of wanting to go from the older ride to the newest ride because the grid had other ideas and I've already been called back for my Tron virtual queue and I cannot be late. Can't be late to the grid. Also this morning's truly starting in chaos because I booked Haunted Mansion with Genie Plus as my oldest ride. That's my favorite of the opening day rides. And I just got a notification that it's closed. So I have one of those like freebie lightning lane redemption passes. But now I have to decide what opening day experience I wanna do if the Haunted Mansion stays closed for too long. I could do Jungle Cruise. I could do the train. That would be fun. Headed into Tomorrowland for our first of eight attractions today. I think it's going to be really interesting to see which attraction wins at each park. Because there's times where the newest ride, I think, is the most fun. Or one of my favorites. And then there's time where the oldest ride is such a classic with such strong nostalgia that that's probably going to be the winner. So I think it'll be interesting to see what plays out. We have made it over to Tron Light Cycle Run, the newest ride, not only here in the Magic Kingdom, but also in all of Walt Disney World. Opened just a few weeks ago. Tron has a unique motorcycle style seat and it puts you on the grid with a zero and almost 60 miles an hour takeoff. As it stands, there are only two ways to ride Tron. There is no standby queue. You can either join a virtual queue or pay for the fancy ride to go in that individual lightning lane. I just did a video on Genie Plus and some of the updates and how to best use it. So I go into more detail there about how to use not only fancy rides, not only the virtual queue, but Genie Plus as a whole. But just as a quick note, the virtual queue is open at 7 a.m. and then again at 1 p.m. At 7 a.m., you must have a Magic Kingdom reservation. At 1 p.m., you must be inside the Magic Kingdom. You can confirm your party up to an hour before those times open, so you can make sure that everybody that's in your group that wants to ride is selected. Use a world clock to count down to the 59.59 right before that time. Click refresh, and then hopefully you'll get a spot in the virtual queue. Once you are in the virtual queue, you will be given a boarding group number. You will then be given a push notification when it is your time to go back to the attraction. You usually get somewhere between a 45 minute and an hour long window to come back to the attraction. Uh, and then once you do that, you head into the virtual queue line, which is not immediate. You're not getting immediate access going this way. It, last time I wrote it, it was about 45 minutes waiting in this line. Looks like it's gonna be about the same today. Make sure you're on time. They are much stricter at Tron than they are at Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. And that's how you ride. About 20 minutes into being in the outside queue, I'm now inside and going through the digitizer. And securing in the storage area between the and the do note that you have to put all of your stuff, all of your main stuff into a locker prior to getting into the load area. This is similar to some universal attractions like Velocicoaster. There is a little tiny compartment in the bike that you could put like your phone in or your glasses in, but it's any kind of bag, ears, hats, you're gonna wanna put that into a locker. Also note that like Velocicoaster, you're gonna exit out on the other side of the lockers to make it a quicker process operationally. So you're gonna wanna remember what number your locker is because you're not gonna be coming back to the same physical location. Let's go with 620, that sounds good. I don't think my phone's gonna work again. 
There we go. You do need to have something physical. If you're like me and have a pop socket on your phone, it won't work. So you need to have a magic band or a card. Here's purse. Ron, check. You know, that's one of those rides that the more I ride it, the more I like it. And it's because I think I'm, I understand the story and what to look for more every time. It's such a quick attraction. It's only like 75 seconds long that the first time you ride it, you don't really have time to look around or understand what's going on. But the more you ride it, there are some cool moments. Like there's a really cool moment when you are riding past a mirror and the wheels on your light cycle turn orange. So it looks like the orange team is next to your team. Um, but it's really just your light cycle. So that's a cool effect. Also, it took about 45, 50 minutes to get from entering the virtual queue onto my bike. So just keep in mind, again, if you're doing the virtual queue, it is not a walk-on. You're probably gonna wait somewhere between 30 minutes and an hour to get on. So plan for that. If you do the lightning lane, you do get to do the cool digitized moment, but you do skip some other parts of the queue. Personally, I don't think the queue is really anything noteworthy other than that cool digitized reveal. So if you're debating between Lightning Lane versus Virtual Queue, Lightning Lane's gonna save you a lot of time, but cost you money. So you'll have to figure out which is more important to you. On the must ride scale, I'm giving Tron a four. Tron is very fun. However, my main complaint remains to be the fact that it's very, very short and it's a lot of hassle to get to. And so it may not be worth that hassle or that cost for some people. I think Tron is very innovative. At least it was when it debuted. Uh, the seat for better or for worse is definitely very unique. I really like the music. I like the effects. There's some really cool tech moments. The reveal in the queue is very neat. So I do think it's on the higher end of the tech scale. I'd probably give it close to a four and a half, five on the tech scale. But again, I think on the must ride scale, it's a four and now we're gonna go ride Haunted Mansion, but I lied to you, um, we're gonna get coffee. Before moving on, I made a little pit stop at Energy Bites, which is the little quick service stand they added near Tron. I got the cold brew, it's got mocha milk in it, but I asked them to do less than normal. Um, it is Joffrey's cold brew, which we love. And then they have two different dumplings. These are the buffalo chicken dumplings. So they're dumplings and they've got buffalo chicken inside, dehydrated blue cheese and a uh, buffalo sauce and some celery. So I'm excited to try these. They also have a beef and broccoli one. Ooh. The texture kind of threw me at first because I thought it'd be more like a traditional like a dumpling or like a soup dumpling, but it kind of tastes like they took a meatball and put it into a dumpling. There's more meat mixture than I expected in there. That said, very good flavor wise. It actually has some heat and some spice, which I'm surprised by because Disney food normally doesn't. I would put this between a medium and a hot as far as a buffalo sauce goes. I like the blue cheese crumbles. Um, they're adding a nice little crisp. They have kind of a, almost a panko breadcrumb texture. I would definitely eat these again. I do want to try the beef and broccoli ones. They're not my favorite snack food in the Magic Kingdom. That's probably still the cheeseburger spring rolls, but these are a good shareable option. It came with three dumplings um, and there's something a little fun and different. So not too bad. Here is that iced coffee. Yep, that tastes like a slightly sweeter Joffrey's cold brew. If I'm being honest, I would recommend if you really want coffee to go over to the Joffrey's Revive, which is by Space Mountain, because that's the full Joffrey's here in this park. However, that line can get long. And if you're over here and you're just looking for a simple cold brew, this is not bad. Um, and it's good to know they add the milk by hand. So if you want more or less, just let them know. Well, just as I was deciding that It's a Small World was gonna be my opening day ride of choice, I checked the app and Haunted Mansion is back. So sticking to the original plan. Thank you to the 999 Happy Haunts for resuming your frightful frolics so we can go have some fun. 
so glad the Haunted Mansion reopened because it's truly the best of the opening day rides, especially in a throwdown with the latest and greatest technology. Hello. Thank you. Like I said, Haunted Mansion opening day ride, October 1st, 1971, but it actually opened up in Disneyland in 1969, so the Imagineers were able to make two copies of everything while working on the attraction. I would say the Haunted Mansion is most likely the most beloved attraction in all of Disney lore. People are absolutely obsessed with this attraction, with the backstory, the details, the characters, the ambiance, the vibes, and for good reason. It is a classic, and let's see if it can hold up to the grid. When ghosts are present, practicing their terror and beauty as they appear in their corruptible mortal state. Kindly step all the way in, please, and make room for everyone. Well, stop when voices first listen. It's time to respond. Send us a message from somewhere beyond. Ugh, how can you not just love a trip on the Haunted Mansion? It's just chef's kiss wonderful. But what to rate it? Now it's easy to do the must ride scale because Haunted Mansion is not only a Disney classic, it is the Disney classic. It is an absolute must ride here in Magic Kingdom. I would say this, Pirates of the Caribbean and a mountain are like your three absolute must do's when you are in this park. Haunted Mansion has been beloved for decades. It's got so many fun storylines and characters. There's always something new to look for and notice. It is just perfect, no notes. But what to give it for technology, considering it's a over 50 year attraction? I'm giving it a five. Just because it's simple technology doesn't mean it's not very impressive technology. Oh my God. There's a tiny baby. I'm not gonna zoom in because that's weird. But there's a tiny bebe dressed like a mansion maid, and it's the cutest thing I've ever seen. Anyway, haunted mansion technology. Gotta be a five because just because it's simple and it's old school technology doesn't mean it's not incredibly impressive. For starters, the Omni Mover system that Disney pioneered is now a Disney staple in several attractions that you know and love. Haunted Mansion, The Seas with Nemo and Friends, Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid, Buzz Lightyear, Space Ranger Spin, Spaceship Earth. It is a classic Disney style of moving you around the attractions and turning you to what they want you to see versus you being able to see everything. You've also got really simple but really effective techniques like Pepper's Ghost, which is how the ballroom scene works. You've got the amazing projection in Madame Leota's face, which used to sit down and they'd project onto it, but then through the years, they were able to figure out how to project from her face so that she can float around. Haunted Mansion, it's absolutely perfect. And I'm giving it a five for tech as well, which is a big nod to Yale Gracie, who is the main special effects Imagineer on this attraction, because those effects have held up for over 50 years. And even when they add in little new touches of technology to brighten it up, his original ideas are still what works on this ride. So. If my math is correct, that means old school beat new school here in the Magic Kingdom. Haunted Mansion greater than Tron. I don't think anyone's too surprised by this one. I think the other parks are gonna be much harder. And speaking of, we gotta get to Epcot. <laughs> Update, I didn't leave yet. I'm getting dramatic. I haven't watched them in a while and it was so nice because like everybody here just like stopped and watched them and it was just one of those like wonderful Disney moments. And then when it was over, they were taking pictures with people, they sang happy birthday to a kid and I just was rushing around all morning to get here on time and to get to Tron and stress about all the things and it's like, 
you have to remember to take your moments in the Disney parks. I know they can be busy and stressful, but you have to take your moments to sit on Main Street and listen to the Dapper Dans sing It's a Small World because that's what it's all about. So I'm gonna stop um, acting like I've never seen them before or like I've never been here before and I'm going to go to Epcot now. <laughs> Made it to Epcot, Disney World's second park, opening up October 1st, 1982. Gonna do the opening day ride first this time. It's time to go thank the Phoenicians. What I would argue is the biggest transformation of any of the parks since they opened. There are still a couple of opening day things I could have chosen from. Spaceship Earth, Living with the Land, Impressions de France, the movie in France. But I went for Spaceship Earth because is there anything more Epcot than riding in Spaceship Earth? Spaceship Earth is an omni-mover just like Haunted Mansion, also family friendly like Haunted Mansion. Slow moving excursion through the story of communication through time, which sounds kind of boring, but it's a treasure. Spaceship Earth check. One thing that I just noticed for the first time ever, and I've ridden this ride probably a hundred times, um, the male scientist's face. Because I am normally so enamored by the female scientist and her amazing sense of style that I forget the man's there. And it was like the perfect, she's Barbie and he's just Ken. But for the first time, I looked at the male scientist. He's not as cool as the lady one. All right, time to score Spaceship Earth. We're gonna go with Must Ride again because it's a five. It is quintessential old school Epcot. It is edutainment. It is 80s Epcot. It's kind of that last remaining remnant of nostalgic 80s Epcot. So I feel like it's a must ride. I remember riding it a ton as a kid and it's just one of those things you gotta do when you come to Epcot. You're in, in Spaceship Earth. Plus, honestly, if you know your ABCs, it's rude to come to Epcot and not thank the Phoenicians. But the technology score, I'm gonna give it a 3.5. It does have the same ride system as the Haunted Mansion. And of course, animatronics are technological marvels. For me personally, it doesn't matter how old they are. I think animatronics are so cool and they're such a unique piece of technology that the Disney company invented and they are just a core principle of Disney attractions. And there's a ton of great animatronics in there. But I can't give it as high of a score as Haunted Mansion because there's not really any effects on Spaceship Earth. There's no projection effects. There's no like real lighting effects. Uh, it's just the Omni Mover and the animatronics. So getting given a 3.5. And now we're off to save the galaxy, baby. Epcot's newest attraction opening up in May of 2022, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. This attraction puts you in an adventure with all of your favorite guardians, Star-Lord, Gamora, Rocket, Groot, and Drax, as you try to save the galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind has a virtual queue just like Tron, which means you can join at 7 a.m. as long as you have an Epcot reservation or 1 p.m. if you are in the park, or you can purchase a fancy ride. Because I started in Magic Kingdom and park hopping isn't until two, the only way for me to get on this ride was to purchase a fancy ride, which I did when Epcot opened this morning at 9 a.m. Again, for all the genie info, head to one of our genie videos. And now I'm headed to go see my buddies. Thank you. Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind has a 42, 42 inch height requirement. And what I will say that's different than Tron is I actually really think this queue is very cool. There's tons of Easter eggs. There's some funny moments with the Guardians and you miss a lot of that by going in the lightning lane. So if you've never ridden it before, I recommend doing the virtual queue. 
Also, Guardians of the Galaxy has six different songs that can come on, which is part of the fun. It can be September, Conga, Iran, Everybody Wants to Rule the World, Disco Inferno, or One Way or Another. I always like to guess what I'm gonna get. I kinda want Disco Inferno. I haven't had Disco Inferno in quite some time, and that one's pretty fun and underrated, I think. So, putting out the vibes for that. Greetings, Terrans. I am Nova Prime Irani Rayan, commander of the Nova Corps. But even we could not have reached you so easily were it not for the cosmic generator. Welcome, Epcot Terrans. I am Centurion Tau Merrick. Saved the galaxy, baby. I did get Everybody Wants to Rule the World. I know that's a lot of people's all-time favorite song. I prefer the faster songs, but I hadn't had that one in a while and it's, it's definitely a vibe. Okay, now what to wear at Guardians. For technology, it's gotta be a five. It is a brand new, never been done before ride system. So that right there should be enough to give it a five. It's an Omni coaster, meaning the roller coaster cars can turn all the way around and it kind of snakes its way around. You don't ever do a full 360, but you kind of snake your way around and the cars turn and face you to look at things like an Omni mover dark ride, but it's a roller coaster. So that right there is incredible. When you add in the technology they use in both pre-shows, that incredible screen in the first pre-show, the reveal in the second pre-show, it's gotta be a five as far as technology goes. Now, the must ride score. I don't know why I'm pretending like I'm gonna say anything other than a five. This ride is amazing. It is nice and long. It is funny. The music's great. It's thrilling. It's innovative. It's absolutely incredible. That means here at Epcot, new beats old, but they should both be on your to-do list. All right, we are done at the experimental prototype community of tomorrow. It's off to Hollywood. <laughs> Narrator, she did not go to studios yet. She came to get queso and a margarita. I actually needed to get this for another video I'm working on. So two birds, you know what I mean? I was hungry. Thinking. Hooray for Hollywood, made it into park number three. Disney's Hollywood Studios opened up May 1st, 1989 as Disney's MGM Studios. And this is the only park today that doesn't have an opening day attraction still available because the opening day rides were the backlot and the great movie ride. So what do you think I'm doing? What do you think is the closest to opening day attraction? If you guessed Star Tours, the adventures continue TM, you are correct. Of course, when it opened, it was just Star Tours TM, and it was only the one adventure you'd go on with Pilot Rex. Nowadays, there are over 50 different adventures you could go on because you're gonna have different beginnings, middles, and ends, and your pilots are now C-3PO and R2-D2. Now, if you haven't seen it, I insist you go watch the Star Tours grand opening from Disneyland, which took place a few months prior to it opening here at Walt Disney World. There's a ballet with Han, Luke, and Leia, that's all I'm gonna say. But Star Tours, again, not an opening day attraction here at MGM, but it opened up in December and the park opened up in May. It is the oldest ride in this park. 
The only thing older than it that still exists right now is the Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular, but I'm sticking to rides today because it'd be really hard to try and compare Indiana Jones, a stunt show, to an attraction. Let the record reflect though, I'd rather see Indiana Jones because Star Tours makes me really nauseous. But in the name of science, let's go. The other main difference between Star Tours, The Adventures Continue TM, and just regular Star Tours is the fact that it's in 3D. Hi C-3PO, hi R2-D2, hello, how are you? Thank you. That cute little goose droid doing security said he's gonna let the satellite receiver go, but it was Mickey ears, so cute. I really hope Poe is on this adventure. I seem to be getting an unusual reading from the binary motivator. But perhaps we should run a systems check. Mm -hmm. Well, satellite receivers are not allowed in check the bank. But I'm gonna let it slide this time, because it's so cute. Just don't tell my supervisor, okay? I have never once walked through the Star Tours seats and not gotten a bruise on my thigh because I run into the armrests every single time. Am I alone? That's us. We can't take off. The captain isn't on board. Excuse me, you don't seem to understand. I am not the captain. I am C3. That ride really does make me so nauseous. It's like that and Mission Space Orange tied for the top nausea spot here at Walt Disney World. Uh, but my nausea bias aside, what do we rate Star Tours? I think for technology, I'm gonna give it like a 3.75. A 3.75 feels good because I do feel like it's more technologically impressive than Spaceship Earth but not quite as high as the other stuff we've done today. I will say, I think 3D technology, good 3D technology is harder and more impressive than people give it credit for. A lot of times people are just like, oh, it's just a simulator. But I think to master the filming and to put all those different storylines together, I think that's more impressive than maybe it appears. Also, when this attraction debuted, the ride vehicle and the way that it works was revolutionary. And while I don't think it stood the test of time the way the Omnimover has, considering the other attractions that use this technology, Body Wars, May they rest in peace. I do think at the time that this debuted, it was pretty unique. I also think the animatronics used in this ride, while there's really only one on the ride itself, there's a couple in the queue, I think that the C-3PO animatronic is a very, very good animatronic. So yeah, I'm gonna put it at like, you know, I'm talking myself up. I'm gonna give it a, a 3.9, just under Haunted Mansion, because I think Haunted Mansion has stood the test of time when it comes to tech. As far as my must-do score though goes, a two. I'm sorry, Star Tours fans, but I just think, especially in this park where there are so many headliners, including much better Star Wars attractions, Rise of the Resistance, Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, plus Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, Rock and Roller Coaster, Slinky Dog Dash, Toy Story Mania, Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway. There are so many heavy hitters in this park that to me, this is not a top priority unless you're a big Star Wars fan. The rewritability is great. It's a great filler ride because it usually doesn't get too long of a line, but it's definitely not as much of a must do as the other things we've done today. And our newest ride in Disney's Hollywood Studios, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. This adorable family attraction opened up just weeks before the parks closed in 2020. 
and it's the latest and greatest here in Disney's Hollywood Studios. This family-friendly attraction is the first ride dedicated entirely to Mickey and Minnie. About time, if you ask me. And it's super cute. It puts you into the cartoon world as you try and catch Goofy's runaway train. I personally think this ride is so, so cute. There are so many Easter eggs and fun details. You can learn about those in my Secrets series. And I just, I really like it. It's one of those, the more I ride it, the more I love it. So let's go into the cartoon world. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is so darn cute. I think it is such a wonderful family ride, which this park desperately needed amongst all the thrill rides. I think has, I think it's got great music. I think the technology is amazing. But, but let's officially rate it, shall we? On the must ride scale, I'm giving it a five. I truly think this is such an adorable attraction, such a great addition to not only here in Walt Disney World, but over in Toontown and Disneyland. I actually like the Disneyland version a little bit more because even though it's basically the same ride, the queue is very cute over there. It's just such a fun ride and it's really hard to get off this ride not just smiling so big. I love the part where you dance with Daisy. I love all the Easter eggs. I love the squid that plays the trombone. Little Pluto with the picnic basket following Mickey and Minnie. I love everything about it except Goofy, if I'm being honest. The pre-show though, amazing. As far as the technology score goes, another five. The projection mapping that they use in this attraction is unbelievable. The fact that they transition some of those rooms before your very eyes, incredible. The pre-show effects, outstanding. And I think they get a lot of thrill done with that amazing trackless technology where you feel the different things you're experiencing, but it's still a family ride. So for me, this ride's awesome. No notes, except for again, goofy. But, but in Disney's Hollywood Studios, probably no surprise, new Trump's old again. And now we say goodbye to Disney's Hollywood Studios and head to Disney's final park, Disney's Animal Kingdom. Made it to our fourth and final park, the best one in my opinion, Disney's Animal Kingdom, which opened up on Earth Day, April 22nd, 1998, just had its 25th anniversary. And we got two more rides to do. Let's go. Ironically, Animal Kingdom is the newest park, but has the oldest, newest ride, if that makes sense. I bet you know what it is. Starting Animal Kingdom off here in Africa, there's actually a couple of opening day rides that we could have done. Dinosaur, which did open as Countdown to Extinction, the Wildlife Express of to Rafiki's Planet Watch in the affection section, the 3D show It's Tough to Be a Bug, those are all opening day rides. Talk about those and many more things on my Animal Kingdom 25th anniversary video. But I think we all know if there's one opening day ride to do at Animal Kingdom, it's the flagship attraction. It's Kilimanjaro Safaris. It's what Animal Kingdom's all about, baby. 
Kilimanjaro safaris is that 25-ish minute safari ride where you head out in a big truck onto the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. And this is the attraction where you get to see real lions, elephants, giraffes, zebras, rhinos, hippos, crocodiles, hyenas, and more. Kilimanjaro Safaris, when it first opened, had much more of a plot than it does now. It had a whole like anti-poaching plot. They took that away several years ago at this point. So now it's just a very lovely and relaxing ride through the savannah where you can take tons of pictures and videos of your favorite animal. Now, my best tip for riding safari is to go early or go late. So since we're going late today, I hope we have a good safari. I really hope we see the hyenas. The hyenas are my favorite animal on the safari and they're only out in the late afternoon evening because they switch spots with the African painted dogs who are out on stage most of the day. Um, but I tell you to go early or late because that's when the animals are more active, when it's not quite as hot as in the middle of the day, especially during the summer. Now, Kilimanjaro Safaris may not seem like it has a bunch of technology, but it does have real lions, so it's gonna be interesting. Regardless, I'm so excited. I love this ride. Let's hope to see hyenas. Safaris, check it off the list. God, that is just the best, isn't it? The rhinos were so close. We got an amazing view of a lioness and my hyenas were out, just the best. But what to rate it? The must ride scale for Kilimanjaro Safaris is easy. It's a five, I'd give it higher if I could. Whatever the scale is, it tops the scale. Kilimanjaro Safaris is why you can be Animal Kingdom. It is real elephants, lions, giraffes, zebras, etc. It's amazing. It's a great family ride. I love that they've added different animals over the years. It's just, it's amazing. It's incredible. It's, it's ugh. what to give it technologically. I'm gonna give it a four. And I think the technology is so impressive for that attraction because you can't see it. It's things like the deterrence and the way that they separate the animals from each other and from you. There are ditches that you can't see because of the force perspective of the rocks. They also encourage the animals to be on stage in ways that you don't notice either. They hide little treats around places, high up in the trees for the drafts, low on the ground for the smaller animals. They air condition the rocks to encourage the lions to sleep out on stage where you can see them. Plus, I think this gets bonus points for the fact that this was Walt Disney's idea in the 50s and they couldn't make it happen because they didn't have the budget, the space, or the resources to figure out how to do it. And it took them until 1998 to make it happen, but they did. And so I know this doesn't seem as technologically savvy as like Guardians of the Galaxy or even Tron, but the fact that they have these state-of-the-art buses that trucks that they developed just for this attraction. The fact that the cast members are driving those trucks, those are not self-driving. The fact that they maintain and feed and care for all of these different animals. There's 2,000 animals at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Many of them are on the safari. The fact that they make it look like Africa, the fact they imported plants from around the world. Plus, I don't care what animatronic you're talking about nothing is as cool as a real lion elephant or giraffe or hyena or rhinoceros so 
yeah, that gets a pretty high score. And now we're headed to the planet of Pandora for our final ride today. I already know people in the comments are like, safaris is an impressive technology. But like, I'm sorry a real lion doesn't impress you. We are making our way into Animal Kingdom's newest land to ride our last ride of the night. We're going for the headliner, folks. Avatar Flight of Passage. This is the flagship attraction here in this land, the newest land at Animal Kingdom. Flight of Passage is the e-ticket ride here in Pandora, which opened up in 2017. And like I said, this is the oldest, newest ride that we're doing today. In my opinion, that means it's high time for Animal Kingdom to get some new rides, new lands. It's, it's Animal Kingdom's turn. Let Epcot be done. Finish Epcot and give Animal Kingdom some love. If you want to talk about the most impressive thing in this land technologically, it's these mountains. Those trump either ride, in my opinion. Avatar Flight of Passage has a 44, 4.4 inch height requirement, and it is a 3D simulator attraction that puts you on the back of a banshee as you fly over the Valley of Moara. Flight of Passage is incredibly popular definitely the most popular ride in this park and it's a lot of people's favorite ride in all of Walt Disney World. But will banshees beat elephants? We're gonna find out in just a second. Flight of Passage is a fancy ride, meaning if you want to skip the line you're gonna need to pay for that individual cost. I will say that towards the end of the night it seems to be dropping when Animal Kingdom closes early. For example tonight Animal Kingdom closes at 7, Magic Kingdom's open till 11, Hollywood Studios is open until 9.30, and Epcot's open till 9. So because of that, a lot of people leave Animal Kingdom and hop over to another park for a nighttime show or dinner or what have you. And the Flight of Passage wait time right now is 20 minutes. When Animal Kingdom closes comparable to the other parks or is open late enough for you to see Pandora at night, then the wait stays long pretty much all day. One thing to note about Flight of Passage, similar to Tron, it has a very unusual seat, similar to a motorcycle. There is a test seat out front, just like there is at Tron. Highly recommend if you are concerned about the seating and if it's gonna be comfortable, sit in that test seat out front with a cast member and have them check you out. That way you don't waste time waiting in a long line only to find out this isn't gonna be an attraction for you. All right, everyone, stay on your number and move your arms a bit. Okay, start scan. You've all got them. She leads her science team, which is part of the Pandora Conservation Initiative. Over a generation ago, this enormous company called the RDA created a lot of damage to the area through their bad mining practices and conflicts with the Navi. That's why you're linking to an avatar. It was Dr. Ogden who restarted the avatar program. It's because of... And, uh... Fly. Flying on its back is an incredibly important part of the hold on to the hand grips at all times. After you're seated, back and leg restraints will be firmly engaged. Just got off Flight of Passage and I got the Flight of Passage hair, you know what I'm talking about. That is such a beautiful ride. I don't ride it very often because it's a fancy ride and because it has a long line usually, but it is truly so beautiful. I definitely think no questions asked, it's a five on the must ride scale, even if you don't care about the movie Avatar. I don't, I still haven't seen the second one. 
It's so long to sit in a movie theater. Like, the first one's just Pocahontas or Fern Gully in space. I assume it's the same in water. And then and now it's like, well, I'm, I'm not going to watch this on my TV at home. It's, that's not the point. The point is to see it, you know, whatever. You get it. Maybe you don't. I don't know. Maybe you love Avatar. Anyway, you don't have to be a big fan of the movie Avatar to think this attraction is absolutely stunning. It's beautiful. The music is incredible. It's for sure a five on the must ride scale. The technology scale, I've, I've been struggling and battling in my mind all day. I actually had a score going in and then I wrote it and I was like, oh, I think I was thinking too low. I think I'm going to give it a 4.5. And some of you are probably like, not a five? Not a five. It's the same technology as Soren, and it is a simulator. And I know that simulators are very impressive in their own way. I mentioned that over at Star Tours, but to me, no simulator, even one as impressive as this, will ever top practical sets, moving vehicles, and real animatronics. So I, I cannot personally give it a five. However, it's the most beautiful and flawless simulator I've personally ever been on. Um, it has the most incredible seat. It's, it's a very unusual seat. It's a little uncomfortable, but the fact that it breathes and it bounces and it feels like you're truly riding on a living, breathing creature is amazing. Um, it's so cinematic. You can smell things. It has a very signature smell. You can feel the breeze. You can feel the water. So I'm giving it a 4.5. Now I know what you're thinking. That would mean that Flight of Passage beats Kilimanjaro Safaris, new beats old here at Animal Kingdom based on the math. But unfortunately, silly me, I forgot to introduce the lion factor. And that's any attraction that has a live lion gets an extra point. So as you can see, Kilimanjaro Safaris does end up beating Flight of Passage. I didn't make up the rules. Except, yes, I obviously made up the rules. And you can love Flight of Passage more than Kilimanjaro Safaris. I get it. But to say that Flight of Passage is better than... Kilimanjaro Safaris just doesn't sit well with me when we're trying to compare. That's, that's the most apples to oranges comparison I think this whole video. And if you were to ask me which one's better, the answer would be Kilimanjaro Safaris. So you can love both, but I think I'm giving it to, to the old school one here at Animal Kingdom. But you know what? Let me know down in the comments about all of these matchups. In Magic Kingdom, it was Haunted Mansion versus Tron. Honda Mansion was declared the winner. In Epcot, it was Spaceship Earth versus Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind was declared the winner. In Disney's Hollywood Studios, it was Star Tours The Adventures Continue TM versus Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. And Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway was declared the winner. And here at Disney's Animal Kingdom, it was Kilimanjaro Safaris versus Avatar Flight of Passage. And I just declared Kilimanjaro Safaris the winner. Which means, as far as the winners go, too old, too new, which just means that Disney's been impressive for 50 years. I don't actually think that's surprising to anyone, but it is really interesting to compare the newest in technology with the old nostalgic classics. This is when I like to remind you that favorite and best are not the same thing. Anything can be your favorite ride, and it probably has something to do with nostalgia, memories made, and it's incredibly subjective, but best gets a little trickier because you're talking from a more objective standpoint, even though it's really hard to compare something like a state-of-the-art simulator to housing live animals on a huge wildlife preserve. But I did my best, and hopefully you enjoyed following along with this science. If you enjoyed following along, definitely let us know down in the comments if you've got other ideas for videos. We love getting creative with our theme park content and not showing the same thing over and over again. Different ways to view the parks, different experiences in the park, and we love your suggestions, so definitely let us know. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, follow us on social media, come hang out with us in Discord. It's a ton of fun. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly, and it has been so magical. Bye.